Well, I'll tell you how busy our local historian is here, folks. With his dancing and all this, uh, all these phone calls he has to uh, attend to. That is last week's newspapers. He hasn't even gotten to them yet. He's getting a little fire going down there in the basement. Winnie wants to be petted. Roger, this is his dining table. Full of stuff. It looks like he's got um, a year pulled out. We're gonna We're gonna get at some stuff here folks. We'll see is in a couple of minutes. All these different people names in there, right? Mm -hmm. Monasteries. <coughs> Monasteries had different, different wall cameras. Well, so you don't have to go through every page. It's just more, more or less that it's all to do. Well, no, but it's good to. It's all to do. Oh, I gotta make sure I have my throat lost in here. Okay, okay. Old, old Raj has a sore throat. Well, welcome everybody. It's, um, we'll be back in one second. Raj just had to go upstairs. He's got a little bit of a throat thing going on. He needs some lozenges. Um, we'll be back with our introduction here soon. Yeah, okay. I think we're on, um, hey Raj. I think we're on, uh, number, I think this is number 18. Yeah. Mara Mahistrashi. We're here with the local historian, Mr. Roger Cummo. And you know, Roger, I was thinking this morning there, I was like, you know, Raj is all vibrant these days. You got like a spring to your step. And I just think it's because you have a million things going on and um, you're keeping yourself busy. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about and some of the work that I've been doing in Vancouver with young people, and you know, Raj and I have been talking about, you know, education versus school. And, uh, and this brings me to our little history project here, okay? Now, I wrote some notes, uh, a book I read by a guy named John Taylor Gatto, and this is his interpretation of what an educated person is, and this pertains to Raj here. Educated people are seldom at a loss what to do with time. Being alone is often a blessing to the educated because they like their own company. Time doesn't hang heavily on their hands. And you know, Raj, you come from a generation where you guys, you know, you guys were just like shipped basically out the door and said, don't come back until lunch. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you guys, you know, which, you know, so I keep thinking about that. And then another thing that, that, that he wrote, and I'm going to mention a few of these as we get going, but it also says, educated people possess an intimate knowledge of history, local, regional, and world. And so Raj, those are two things right there that you line up in the old educated, uh, this guy's idea of education. So where are we at today? We're at 1996. I remember Raj telling me before, like 1996, he has loads of stuff. Oh. And that we're going to probably have to take a few sessions to get through wow. this this stuff, Raj. It's incredible, uh, the amount of uh, stuff that's in the box for that year. <clears throat> 96. So you must have just been, and it could be things were happening that year and also you were kind of focused 
of uh, collecting that year, which, uh, you know who I just got off the telephone with? Mr. Brian Richard. Hello, Brian, and we've been thanking you for all of your great work that you've done and uh, with this paper over the years, and uh, Brian told me that he's looking forward to starting to watch a few of our episodes here. So we hope we don't disappoint you, Brian. Okay, we're going to start off with uh, what, what we used to <coughs> do in the, in the past quite often was uh, Bogeyville Days. Okay. And the reason why we're going to start off, we want to feature a certain person okay. uh, for this program. So this is a little program, <coughs> and you know, once again, we live on the Miramichi River. We're part of a municipality that is called the Miramichi City. It's a city, and Logieville is one of the communities. It's on the eastern, it's on the southern part of the river to the east. Small community, this is where Roger and I grew up. So this is Logieville Days, 1996. Uh, we had, they, they began with a karaoke night on Saturday. Sunday there was a breakfast, two bucks for children, four bucks for adults. Um, it says a note. For those who like to chat over a second cup of coffee, there will be a babysitting service available for a small fee. <laughs> uh, there was a horseshoe tournament. And it's coffee. Coffee, yeah. It, uh, there was a horseshoe tournament on Sunday, and it said, contact Ronnie and Roger Como. And when they meant Ronnie and Roger, Ronnie's my father, they, they meant Roger. Um, and the dance, Becky Banks McLean. And she was playing from 9 to 1. The cost was $5 a person. And so, Roger, I was a little bit young. I always heard the name Becky Banks McLean, but here's a poster from that same lady, Becky Banks McLean. There she is, folks. She was a local entertainer on the river. What a beautiful photo. Isn't that just a great head of hair? 1996. Um, wow. Great. Um, so hits from the 50s through the 90s. Becky Banks McLean at Logieville Days Community Center, Sunday, August 4th, 1996. And her band was called The Fury. So she has connections in Logieville. Okay. Her husband was Harry, yep. a Logieviller. Yeah. Right on. And you say, so she was a great entertainer on the river. People like to dance to her oh, music. I thought she's uh, the best uh, entertainment we ever had there for our dances. Uh, oh, right on. Singing wise. And, uh, right on. And, and she was kind of down to earth. She was able to mingle pretty good. And so it was one night there, uh, she was singing, and the next thing, well, she often come off the stage and come down and walk among the dancers continue her songs and all of a sudden she uh, appeared right up beside me and then she started singing happy birthday oh right on <laughs> so roger got a happy a personalized happy birthday from becky banks mclean so that's roger como's story that coincides with marilyn monroe singing happy birthday to jfk that's roger's that's how he compares that, folks. Becky Banks McLean singing happy birthday to Roger. Marilyn Monroe singing happy birthday to JFK back in 63 <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Okay, what else we got okay, here? Okay, now we're going to focus on the community of Knappen. Knappen, to the south of here, farmland. So yesterday we were talking about uh, covered bridges. Yes. And I was telling you about the, this old bridge in Knappen that was collapsing. Yeah. There it is right oh, there, yeah. the White Lane Covered Bridge. Okay. And here I was asking around for people if they had photos, and, and I, I, I forgot that I had I even had that here. I'll bring that back to show the, okay, the cool. forest there in Napping. So this was just a special edition that came from the Miramichi Leader, and it just was a look at Napping. Napping is our agricultural farming community just to the south here. It has, a, it has two roads that go east-west, the north and the south Napin Road. A lot of great athletes, a lot of great families, a lot of great, uh, and it has a rich farming tradition, comes out of the Knappen area. And um, there's the covered bridge. That was one of the last covered bridges in our county here in New Brunswick, in northern, uh, in Northumberland County. I don't know what year, but this is from uh, August 6, 1996. And George Bremner and Marion Gillis, Knappen Sweezy Bridge. And they have some school pictures here. Uh, there's an interesting shot of a guy that looked like he was an outdoorsman. You see all those things lined up? I'm taking a look. They look like duck to me. They look like a bunch of ducks lined up. 
And that was Cyrus Logie at Point Chevelle, 1920, and he's standing there with his musket. And just show, open it up and just show the amount of photo. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, you know, we, we keep on repeating um, Knappen, the people, the history, and we keep on repeating how times are different. We know everybody's on Facebook. We know that people are sharing the internet, and people are still looking at photos and sharing things, but it's a very different, um, it, it, it's a very different uh, medium right now with, you know, when you had a newspaper back in the day, um, look at look at the coverage here. It just these are all historical photos from Napin's history, and we have a lot of stuff. So we're gonna be kind of a little bit limited in in what we read and mention. I think today because mm -hmm. we got a lot of books. But you know when you have special editions that were coming out into a community, everybody could sit around and, and everybody was reading the same thing. So it connected a community. Same with television back in the day. Here's a photo of Philip Bremner. He died in 1859. Like, look at that. Looks like he was just ready to... He died just, you know, he looks like he was just ready to go fight in the Civil War. Um, uh, who else? Gray Jardine, 1816 petition for a land grant. There's maps in here. This is, you know, for those people that were interested in uh, taking all this edition in. This is really excellent work. And Knappen does stretch out into the, into the bay, right onto the Atlantic Ocean. It has, uh, I used to play hockey out on the river when I was a kid there. Wow, Raj. This yeah. is really, really, really excellent stuff. Here's a picture of Elmer W. Digman. Right there, folks. It looks like he was on his way to a war. Could have been one or two. The dates are not there. I'm not sure. So thank you once again for well, sharing. Alan, Alan, Gris, Alan Gillis. Gillis. Was, uh, the president's message. The president's message for Knappen Days, folks. Alan Gillis. So Knappen has some names out there. Gillis, McDonald's, Dignams, McDermott's, the very, Bremner's. The very last page. Yeah. History of Carmel United Church. The history of the Carmel United Church. Is that the one on the south Knappen Road? On the corner? Oh, yeah. I think so, right? Oh, yeah. Before you go to point a car there. And that's before they have all of the uh, wheelchair accessible ramps out there, which, you know, takes away a little bit from the aesthetic. So once again, this whole article provided by this guy. Okay. Here. So we're going we're gonna to give some credit to this fine gentleman right here. His name was Harold Adams? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Harold Adams, you know, Roger was always following his uh, his work over the years. He he put a lot of time and effort into bringing Miramichiers the local history. So guys like that, they need to be recognized. They need to be celebrated. And our local wow. historian here in Logieville has done just that, folks. Well, we're going to just show you a few more articles from Harold here in a okay. few minutes. There. Is, is, really? Harold, uh, is Harold still doing some work? Is he still around? Oh, is oh, he oh, st yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Now, I, I did my own uh, uh, protective uh, package <laughs> here because I have a secondary issue Yeah. that was kind of like in bad shape there. So Okay. So it looks pretty good there now, but it's been protected. So I have I had left a message on this protector sheet. Yes. And it says uh, it says try to be careful of the special article. Now don't bend in care of C O B. That means crazy old bastard. <laughs> so in here there's some more writing. In here. Yeah. You, you can you can. Okay. So this is just Raj showing how he was protecting some of his edition right there. And the message says, this special design cover came from the brain of a 74-year-old trackety born Tiga. 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 That's French for a little boy. Okay. Uh, before moving to Miramichi, he was 87% French, 13% Anglais. Today he is 89% English and 10% Francais, 1% Spanish, C, News, 
Pepep Kratos. <laughs> I don't think our viewers are going to be able to follow such a thing. But that's funny. That's Roger. Um, <laughs> is that, uh, are you talking about yourself? Uh, yeah. Roger would be talking about himself. Born in Trackety, just to the northeast of here, folks. And that's another addition. So Roger is keeping these things in safe places. And I'm telling you, it's important to have a local history being kept. And that's what Roger has done. And Harold W.J. Adams from Chatham has also done that. Okay, we're going to take a little okay. shot with uh, uh, Once again, we've been showing this guy quite a bit. This is from uh, one of New Brunswick's papers here, the Telegraph Journal. This is our local uh, uh, boy from Capillet near Shediac uh, named Riel Cormier. And this is him when he was with the Montreal Expos. Time to get Riel real. And he had a great career here, folks, as we mentioned before. And that's a great photo on the cover of the sports edition from April 1996, getting ready for the baseball season. Yeah. Baseball always starts on April 1st. Yeah, so likewise, we have another another similar article, okay. another front page guy. Okay, and this is also from the Telegraph Journal. This is, all, this is from June 17th, 1996, and it says... And this is a picture, this is a great action shot of our local boy from Knappen that we just mentioned. He was, his name was Jason Dixon. He had a major league career uh, until the shoulder injuries kind of cut that short. And this was featuring him. He, it says, uh, Miramichi's Jason Dixon is enjoying a rapid rise through the professional baseball ranks. And that was him. He had a great career. I think he played in Oklahoma. And, yeah, uh, okay. Skip through okay. Okay, second out. Might be something else. Uh, <coughs> here. I know there's a, that's a, a, double, a double page of him there. Okay. So there's a double page uh, feature on Jason Dixon right there. There's a great photo of him as he was beginning his career. There's a nice photo of him. It could, looks like kind of a graduation photo, folks. A year-by-year -year look at, Dix at, at uh, Dixon's young career. So they were covering it. And, um, you know, 23-year-old Chatham product climbing California Angels Ladder. Dixon, the third New Brunswick player uh, now in the major leagues. We had Matt Stairs, Jason Dixon, and Riel Cormier in those late 90s, and it was a really, really excellent uh, time for us. Bill Daly, former teacher, he was his coach. He's watching uh, Dixon's... Billy Daly watches as Dixon pitches. Bantam coach proud, Bill Daly was one of 40 people clustered around the televisions at the scoreboard, which was a local pub kind of bar, to watch Jason Dixon's first major league outing Wednesday. I remember as a kid watching that at my friend's house. It's also Morris salutes Dixon. Um, uh, Ironman coach Greg Morris is happy to see one of his players making it big. We are all very happy for him and pretty excited. And uh, he pitched against the, the, the New York Yankees. Derek Cheater led off the game, hit a home run off of Jason, and then Jason went on to never not give up another run and win his first major league start against the, ex Yankees. Against the New York Yankees in New York. That's a season's end, a nice picture. Okay, and this is at season's end. Look at that great photo right there and how good and healthy and young and handsome he looked right there. And Jason has gone on to, uh, I think he's working for either Baseball Canada. I think it's Baseball Canada. I think he has a pretty high up position. He's a well-spoken, articulate guy. And all the credit is due. It takes a lot of, not only do you have to have physical ability, you gotta have that mental ability as well. And which is a lot, it, it's, it's you know arguably more difficult to... Uh... So we're gonna stick around napping for a little bit okay. longer here. Okay. Back in the... Uh, September of, uh, 96. 96. Okay, so here is a local player, and speaking of Jason Dixon, these guys grew up together, played on many of the same teams, and this guy here, 
He's still he's st he's still around the Miramichi. I just watched his daughter play basketball a few games. He she plays with my niece. We already talked spoken about this guy's brother Troy a couple of times. Well, this is David Godfrey. Okay, David Godfrey is a very mild mannered, uh, humble gentleman that just happened to be one heck of a ball player. I, if, if my memory serves me correctly, he was a third baseman and a pitcher, and he could hit. He always hit like three, four in an order. It says, Godfrey plays all positions well. And this is by Dave Butler. We give credit to Dave Butler for covering these things, uh, these sports uh, stories very well over the years. David Godfrey had a sensational year with the Chatham Ironman of the New Brunswick Senior League. Uh, Godfrey's statistics speak for themselves. Regular scheduled games this past summer were seven inning games, and Godfrey hurled 42 innings. He was 6 and 0. Um, he only allowed 40 hits. He struck out 34 and walked only 9. He had an ERA of 2.67. And in his 110 plate appearances that year, in 81 official at bats, he had 30, he batted 420. He had a league high 12 home runs. 10 doubles, uh, league high 31 runs, he scored 33 runs, and led the loop in stolen bases with eight. So, wow, what a season. And Godfrey more consistent this year, he, uh, his coach said. So, David Godfrey, I remember that year. He was just knocking the crap out of the baseball, everything he did, and he pitched very well, he hit very well, and he was a great third baseman, and he was a great uh, guy to boot. And I remember one of his teammates, John Saunders, the catcher. We'll get into some Saunders stuff, I'm sure, over the course of our program. But mm -hmm. when John was moving into his house, it was myself and David Godfrey who helped Johnny move in. I thought he was player of the year. Oh, he would have. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm sure he was MVP of the I think he was MVP yeah. of the whole uh, league yeah. that year. Yeah. yeah. And I remember that year. He was, uh, it's one of the best uh, seasons on record in the New Brunswick Senior Baseball League. So good on you. And you should see his uh, daughter right now playing basketball. Oh. She was one of the she's one of the youngest players on the team, I think. Yeah. Oh, tenacious. Oh my. So fast. Yeah. You should see her motoring. I forget her name. Reese, I think maybe. I think her name is Reese. I'm not sure about that, but she is gonna like when she gets it when she's a grade twelve student. Well, now we're gonna, gonna switch over yeah. to uh, horseshoes. Oh, horseshoes. Okay, right on. So there's approximately thirty. Yeah. So he's involved in this tournament in Chatham Head. Okay. With the eventual winners over here. Okay. Show the gathering of the crowd there. Okay. We don't have a list of these guys, but this was a horseshoe tournament, folks. And there they are. There's nothing like a good day. This, um, yeah, September. September's the best horseshoe month. You go out, you hang out, the, the skies are blue, and it's just a great way to spend the time League Championships, the Miramichi Alpine Horseshoe League 1996 Pitching Championships was held Labor Day weekend at the Chatham Head Recreational Center. Above are first place winners, Ronnie Corcoran and Brian Hubbard. And to the left is the group in the league. And, you know, my family, uh, Roger and my father, they always partnered up in tournaments. And right where I point, right that way, in between where uh, Roger's house is now and where I grew up, there's a really nice little uh, courtyard there that um, Roger has two sets of horseshoes closed in with cedar trees, some tier seating, and I tell you what, Rog, if I'm around this summer, that little uh, facility down there is gonna get maybe a little bit more use than it has over the past because we're gonna get some people here having some fun playing some horseshoes. Well, it's I love doing that. That'll be interesting. Okay. Okay. And a little bit of <clears throat> and, and a side note on that. Yeah. And when we're out playing horseshoes, Roger Como has a bat he has a outhouse that uh, consists of a big pail, what are they called? Ten yeah, five bucket, gallons? Bucket, yeah. Big bucket. <laughs> Fills a little bit with water, and the guy's got to go around the garage with a piece <laughs> of plywood blocking the view of the street. <laughs> of the neighbors, eh? And the neighbors. So the best way you can deal with this here is yeah. the demolition of, uh, to make room for progress. Okay. But it's a, re a well-known uh, property that's being done away with. But, okay. But, but relocated. 
Okay, there's the photo. I will read the caption. A little bit of construction work, a low, uh, relocation of a business, I'm assuming. Yeah, a demolition job. A demolition, making way for road work. Giroir, uh, Giroir's yeah. Repair Center and Muffler Service on the corner of Newcastle Boulevard, that's Mitchell Street and Jane Street, has been leveled. The demolition, demolition was necessary to make room for the new road, which will connect to the overpass of the new bridge near the Miramichi Mall in Miramichi West. The business has moved into its new location on the King George Highway across from the Lincoln, or sorry, the Linden Recreation Center. The photo was by Margie Butler. So there's a little local story from 1996, September 1996. Giroir's Repair Center and Muffler Service relocated, folks. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, another, uh, another well known <coughs> project done by the local paper. Uh, okay. Showing about all the businesses, not oh. all of them, a lot of businesses okay. on the mayor machine. Okay, so all of you entrepreneurs out there, this is a section. This is from February, Tuesday, February 26th. 7th, 1996, this is a special edition from the Miramichi Leader paying homage to those entrepreneurs out there and giving a little bit of a voice to the local businesses on the river. It says Progress 96, Miramichi Leader Progress 96. There's a photo of a working man right there. He looks like he's got a jackhammer and you know if you have a guy and he's jackhammering and he's able to smile like that after a day of doing that you know you got yourself a good employee there's nothing like a good old jackhammer okay so raj let's, let's go keep going till we get the right up right here okay okay right here you read that okay there's a little uh caption there. there's a little caption right there is that chuck dewey himself right there the old photo photographer, or maybe not? No. Okay, so there's a little write-up. We got uh, Washburn buys Dewey's. Miramichi Dewey photographer is under new management. The 30-year-old business was purchased by Don Washburn, East Pointer, which is basically Logieville, last August after the retirement of former owner Chuck Dewey. Um, yeah, right on. Yeah. So. That's just one example of, of the, that's uh, that's one example, and that building right now, if if you drive by there now, you'll see a uh, fake bird built made out of some material bl blowing off the roof, trying to scare away the pigeons. <laughs> There's pigeon shit everywhere. the The roof does look like it's sinking. So anybody that's going to buy that, you take a look at the roof. I'm not. I hope I'm not doing anybody any service here. I'm just trying to give you a heads up. And I think it's sagging just be from all those pigeons <laughs> sitting on it over the years. Hey, I, I I always notice that uh, uh, that roof over there. Okay, so what else do we have here, Raj? We got Dickinson's Pharmasave. Oh. We have um, some home hardware. Yeah. Uh, Bow Bears Co-op. G and G. G and G Third Co Year Bow Industrial Park. And, uh, Black Ear. There's Raymond Black Ear from uh, Bow Bears Co-op. He was the manager. Kind of looks like Craig McCormick in that picture. Uh, G and G Brothers, G and G Third Year in Industrial Park. Um, they sell Kawasaki Street Belt bikes as well as their Troy built lawn and garden equipment. Forty four years for Casey Tire. Oh, and then another one, Casey Tire turns forty four years in ninety six. See the G and G Brothers, local Miramichi business guys, and any of you guys that know Craig McCormick, you're telling me that doesn't look like him. <laughs> 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 Ben's a landmark. Ben's was hot dogs and hamburgers over the years. I had many, many hot dogs and hamburgers in there. And just a side note, the legendary voice of the Miramichi, Patty Quinn, yeah. worked at Ben's in high school. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Lounsberries. We have... Um, Kmart. Uh, the Kmart area, Kmart serves area for 38 years, uh, and you know, so it's very good. Sam's uh, Army Surplus, I remember that place. Yeah. He bears okay. bottle exchange and scrap metal, that's still going. Uh, Tozer Plymouth was in 96. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, right on, Raj. Yeah, there's a, yeah so quite a... Quite a production. A second subway opens in the city. This one was at the... Is that the one that was in Chatham? 
The New Castle's is third Ridge, anniversary. Ridge, Ridgeview Plaza, across from Douglas Town. Oh yeah, right on. So there you go, folks. And on the back page of that was uh, Flett Motors. So they must have been doing good at that time if they were able to afford a, a full page ad on the back of the Miramichi Leader. Yeah, so we're not ready for this yet. Okay. Okay, we're going to take a little visit across to the, the cove, mm -hmm. across the river. And this is a, the, a painting, I think. It's, oh, uh, um, it's a nuclear story they're saying that somebody painted. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. But anyway. Back to the French Fort Cove. It's one of the beautiful areas to go into our city here when you want to go for a little nature walk and still be very close by. The cove named after Fort, built to protect French settlement, French Fort Cove. Also a quarry in its history. I remember they used to have a uh, the pond hockey tournament there. Yeah. Years ago, there's a, uh, what are those things called that go across the cable? Um, I, you know, the, I, I can't think of the name right now, sorry, but, you know, the hanging cable rides or whatever. Yeah. Uh, there's little bridges across there. It's a very nice little nature and the stack walk. Was, stack was tore down. The, yeah. the chimney tore down. The chimney at French Fort ago. Cove was, was tore down a few years ago, and that was a cool, I liked that place. It was it was built, a, I liked it. It was built all out of uh, bricks. Oh, there's a picture in the back showing uh Okay. That's known as Buckley's Mill. Okay. Right there. So that's all, basically, uh, everything there is all gone. <laughs> okay, so this used to be at the Cove. Very... Buckley's Mill, there's this. There's the stack right there. There used to be a mill right there. Pretty blurry, that picture. Yeah, it's pretty blurry, but, you know, there's a little story on French Ford Cove from 96 when they were turning it more and more into a, uh, a little park area, commissioned developing tourist... Destination, it says. Oh, look at this. Okay. This is a great one. Oh, wow, Raj. Yeah. And like I say, it takes all kinds. Every community has many people of many different interests. And here is no exception right here. We have a birder. And to be honest with you, Raj, I am a bit of a... I'm not like a, a big-time birder, but I, I've always been interested in birds. There is the rare bird. We're gonna read that to you in a second. And another thing, Raj, that we're another thing that we're doing here. Raj kind of has an idea. He he picks some things out of his out of his uh, trays that he's built uh, out of the sheet metal. And then I get over here. Um, sometimes Raj has some barley soup brewing. Pours that into a cup for me. <laughs> But when he hands over stuff, it, this is all kind of new to me. So this is how we're deciding to do it. A rare birder's rare bird. Her name is Mary Majka, New Brunswick's most famous bird lover, keeps a close eye on an albino raven named Alby Below. A myth takes wing in Albert County. So this is not necessarily on the Miramichi, but look at that, an albino raven. I never even knew such a thing existed. Look at that, way cool. And look at that beautiful lady right there. Her name, Majka, it sounds like Eastern European to me. Yeah. But really cool, and I tell you what, I was in the Mississippi, Raj, uh, in October, and the guy that I went to meet, I told you about him before, I've spoken about it, he's an amazing artist, he's a river guide on the Mississippi. You know what one of his things is? Every day. This is what he does every day, and I've taken this upon myself. He calls it species count. And what he tries to consciously do every day is anytime he sees an animal, a bird, whatever, he tries to keep track of what he saw in a day. And it keeps you conscious of nature. And you know, four blue jays, whatever, whatever, right? So I think that's, isn't that a good exercise? Yeah. I like that. So we have a, a rarity here in the color of the paper. Okay. Uh, it's all about the 15th anniversary of our NB College up here. Okay, NBCC. And, and again, it's uh, the fine works of uh, Harold Adams. Okay, Harold Adams once and, again. A uh, few, few locals that are employed, like different departments there. Okay. Uh, Pauline there, you can probably read, okay. it, read out those names there maybe okay. anyway. And the instructor down here is Robert Scott. Okay, so this is okay. another special edition from the Miramichi Leader, letting people be informed here. The Miramichi Leader Section B, November 12th, 1996. This is a 15th anniversary special from Miramichi College, uh, NBCC Miramichi. It says, the empires of the future are empires of the mind. 
Winston Churchill actually said that. Uh, so here's a couple of photos of, of some of the, uh, the teachers and some students. We'll read out some things to you guys. Really excellent. Is that Brian Richard there? No. Um, environmental technology program monitoring demonstration well at NBCC Miramichi. We got Janet Flacknell, Patrick McMahon, he was the instructor, Aaron Law, and bottom right, Jeff McNeil and Wayne Titus. Administrative staff, Shelley Van Buskirk, Pauline Lorden, Debbie Jardine, Paul Daigle, Harriet Sherrard, and Michael Terrian. And we talked about uh, Pauline Lorden yesterday. She was Athlete of the Year in 88 in the Miramichi. She played for Team Canada. She was an AUAA First Team All-Star MVP of that conference when she played basketball at UMB. And there's Paul Daigle, folks. I see him at the gym the other uh, day, and I always have a little chat. Roger played on uh, Hal Shaw's Raiders, folks, with Paul Daigle. And I'll tell you what, Paul... He was a tenacious little winger going into those corners, eh? You had to keep your head up if you're on the other team. He'd get those elbows <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, Ken Royama and Robert Gibson, instructor Don Frank, and vocational forest worker course, Trevor Connors, Kirk Betts, Ashley Fraser, Danny Sturgeon, Mary... Conahan, Maxime Cote, Tony Godin, and instructor Robert Scott. So right on, Raj. That's really excellent. The yeah. NBCC. So like I said, he was... Uh, Harold you know, Adams bringing all of this work to us. And uh, the college started out over in the old uh, St. Grammar School. Yeah. First location of the college okay. there. Well, right on. There's a photo of the first location of the, old grammar school. of the college, the old grammar school in Shadham near the church there, St. Michael's Basilica. And this is just a, you know, and, and the college is still going now. I haven't been in there. I took some university courses in there right after high school. Yeah. Before I went to university. And it was, uh, okay, so in 96, the Miramichi College Student Council. There's a photo right there, folks. I'm going through this the first time. That was the student council right there and that consisted of terry o'donnell she was the president jody quinn was the first vice president linda turner she was the staff liaison and shyla carrier was the treasurer they used to get together every tuesday for a meeting at lunch uh which was provided from the taxpayers of the miramichi folks and uh, <laughs> no i'm sure they did great work yeah. So really good, Raj. Yeah. Honoring our local yeah. community college, which very, is very nice, nice, bright. Uh, it's and nice it's in mint condition. Yeah. So very well done, Raj. It's all right. Now we have a well-known artist here. Oh well, Ricky Knowles. Okay. Oh well. Um, <clears throat> Miramichi's Rick Knowles wins a five-year contract with Animation's Top Guns. So here's a local Miramichi, a working artist, being featured. Look at his work right there, folks. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This guy's name was Ricky Knowles. The son of Sandy and Wilford. Sandy. Wilford Knowles. Wilford Knowles, Knowles okay. Yeah. And Sandy Lerith, and that's Blair's sister. Oh, okay. I didn't know. Yeah. Getting into his work, artist Rick Knowles, up close and personal with one of his creations. Miramichi Rick Knowles, as I said, wins a five-year contract. He's, uh, the young Miramichi animator seems to effortlessly bring a page to life. His talents also appear to have just as effortlessly carried him to his dream job as an animator for Walt Disney in Toronto. So it's always excellent when we have a local person doing good out there and I'm sure this guy right here um, anybody that's working in the creative uh, sector in, in anything and is able to do their work and get paid for us you couldn't get much more of a success than that so I'm still trying to figure that out for myself folks yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and done up in color yes real, really nice with the, with the color that we get in the paper now and again yeah very beautifully done so that was from a, a St. John newspaper the Telegraph Journal but it was yeah it was uh, uh, featuring a local Miramichi artist Ricky Knowles yeah oh look at there Beaver Rope, alias Max 
And that's this home. Okay. And there's just a nice picture. There's just a feature on the Beaverbrook House over in Newcastle, right next to Bell Alliant right now. Um, Beaverbrook House, a cultural tribute to Miramichi's Max Aiken, boyhood home of Sir Maxwell Aiken, also known as Lord Beaverbrook. Side note, he actually wanted to be call, called a Lord. Oh, yeah. Miramichi. Lord Miramichi. And they said, no, it would be very difficult to pronounce that. Yeah. The Queen didn't know how to pronounce it when she first tried to say Miramichi. I just read a book, a little history book on Lord Beaverbrook. It was nonfiction, written by David Adams Richards. It's very well done, very easy to read. <coughs> and I'll tell you what, the scope of who Lord Beaverbrook really was and what he did is amazing and I'm not you know David Adam Richards didn't paint him as a perfect human being no way but he was a very influential person and more influential than most of uh, most of us would ever realize during World War II he was a confidant of Sir Winston at Churchill folks very close with him so many decisions that a Miramichir made during World War II Raj and, and the years before that yeah shaped the history of the world no joke. <clears throat> Unbelievable, Lord Beaverbrook. I highly recommend you look into uh, what he was all about. Okay, now we're going to go to the pulp mill in Newcastle, okay. where a lot of us worked. Yep. Repap. Raj was an employee there for how many years? Oh, 36. 36. So the Repap sponsored a golf tournament on behalf of the, the people that wanted to play. So this, okay. sheet, this sheet here just indicates... Okay. Okay, there was 28 groups of four, looked like a four-man scramble kind of thing, yeah. or a woman, yeah. 112 players, and oh. you know what? Okay, okay. You want to, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. okay. Yeah, why not read some names? People I, will I, be interested. I some, some okay, people, yeah. <clears throat> so here's some names that played in the 1996 Repap, and anybody does, you know, Repap is paper backwards. Um... It was a massive employer to our town here, and when that place closed down, oh my God, we all felt it. We all felt it in our hearts. Okay, so we had Everett Gauguin. His daughter um, just won the uh, Nelson Royalty from 1988 that we featured yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Keith Carroll. Um, Bill Fenlon, also known as Bucky. Bucky was an umpire. And we showed a picture of Bucky meeting Gordy Howe back in the 60s when Gordy was here for a banquet. Keith Trevors was first in the Miramichi Jug Club that we featured yesterday. And I'm wondering how come Brian Richard wasn't in first place. Uh, hey, Brian. <laughs> uh, Terry Walsh. Or is that the same Terry that used to be a catcher mm -hmm. in Nelson mm -hmm. softball? No. No, a different guy? No. Yeah. Frank Gallant. Dougie Cooling. So these are these are um, Rogers co-workers, uh, Paul Manderson, Paul Richards, Terry Savage, Greg Swain, Mike Donovan, Claude or Claude Gorman, Bruce Barry. Is that the same Bruce Barry that played hockey? Yeah. Was the captain of the Miramichi Moose that won the New Brunswick Senior C Championship, and they went to the Eastern Canadians. Yeah. And Bruce was, uh, him and Tom Selleck hold the record for having a mustache the longest time. Uh, Larry Bolo, Danny Mountain, Nick Napke, and who were the winners? Okay, they're right here. I'll give you the show okay. here. Okay. Wow. And look at what this man keeps. Like, it, it's very interesting. You know, this, is, this was very well done and very well documented. A company golf tournament. There wasn't much paper coming off of the uh, <laughs> of, of the head of the mill that weekend, let me tell you. And the winners, first place, Donnie Lynch, Phyllis Cooling, Dave Ivany, Pat Henry. And second place, I'm going to say, oh my goodness gracious. Um, in second place, Blair LeBreton and Peggy LeBreton, who live a hop, skip, and a little bike ride across the park here. Um, and you're, and the one and only Mr. Roger Como, the local historian, and Roger's late wife, Margie Como, who also happens to be, um, you know, a very special woman over the years here in Logieville. Um, they were in second place. So Blair, Peggy, Roger, and Margie 
Um, I, I walked with Blair Raj the other day from oh. his house to this. I was out walking the dog, and he's, he comes out of his house. Oh, hey, how you doing? Where are you going? I had a great chat with him. The best dressed golfer, Stu Almost. The best dressed couple, Dave and Carol Ann Smythe or Smith. Longest drive, Brian Gorman. And that is a really, really, oh, happy birthday on June 26th to Robert Holston, Wayne Hubbard, and Robert Stewart. And on June 27th to Reggie Foran, Paul Gokey, Stan Sutherland, Bill Underhill, and James Jalefsky. And you know what? When I first started playing ball in Nelson, when the Logieville program stopped, yeah. Paul Gokey was my first coach. Okay. <laughs> and he treated me good. That's very well done, Raj. And thank you for keeping such a thing. You wait until we get into the hockey pools that this man has documented over the years. <laughs> and Kenny Blackair, I asked you if you had any documentation of Logieville hockey pools with your you and your teenage friends. And if you're watching, I am waiting for that. Yeah. And Mary Jane Kingston, we're getting ready for you next week, folks. We're going to do all things Matilda when you're ready to hang out with us. So it's just, oh, what do you got here, Raj? Well, it's just a renaming of a lot of the streets. Oh, okay. Yeah. So is this when the city amalgamated? Well, like, yeah, we're the okay. city, we're city in Alta, 96. Yeah. Okay. So at this time, the local communities notice of street... Uh, okay, notice to Renaming. City of Miramichi Street Changes. This is a two-page uh, pamphlet, booklet here. Roger Cummo, the local historian, he hasn't thrown one thing away since <laughs> 1940. What year are you born? 47? 47. Since yeah. 1947. Um, and it's very interesting. So here, uh, let's just name, okay, so... The towns that amalgamated in the Miramichi to become the city of Miramichi, Chatham and Newcastle, Douglas Town, which is actually where most of the businesses are located oh, now, oh, yeah. Logieville, Taintville, Moorfield Ferry Road. So we had Chatham Head, Bushville, Nordine, we already said Newcastle, and Nelson, Miramichi. And we all, like any other, you know, these communities and these neighborhoods, we still all call them by their old names, right? So, Roger, that's really cool. Oh. Elm Street. Okay, so the name, okay, what are we going to do? In Chatham? Well, well especially... Uh, uh, Matheson. What, the change. They were, okay, it yeah. Says, it says no change there. Like, yeah. for example, over in Newcastle, Buckley Avenue was changed to Matheson. Matheson Avenue. Avenue. Yeah. And in Chatham, Pleasant Street turned to Chatham Ave Avenue. Upper Water Street just turned to Water Street. Uh, Whale and Lane turn turned to uh, Frederick Street. In Douglas Town at the time, I don't know, Miramichi Boulevard became Marina Drive. Yeah. And River Drive became Rankin Drive. Yeah, and, you know, I'm sure that there was crazy arguments during the city council meetings. Like, we're not changing the name. We're keeping uh, Water Street here in Chatham. You guys, I don't care what you're doing in Newcastle. And I'll go down to my grave fighting for Water Street staying in, New in Chatham. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. Okay, we're we'll, gonna uh, take a time out here. For okay, a little seconds. time out. Go use the washroom, let the dog in, and uh, see if our barley soup is brewing here. <laughs> well, it looks like the program was never ever touched. Oh, that's that's an excellent. Yeah, it's an excellent shape once okay, again. Okay, so yeah. and then we'll talk about the Logieville Coffee Shop. Okay, I didn't even know that existed. Yeah. Um, you know what, Raj? Before we even get into any more, yeah. we're back. And we'll take a word out from our sponsors. So, so far we've had two sponsors, Roger's daughter, Amanda, who will show that up close. Look at that cool painting back there of this man right there. And our other sponsor, we've shown some works from this guy. This is a self-taught craftsman. There's nothing better than a self-taught uh, person doing things when they figure it out themselves. First principles thinking. This is all Mr. Corey Wishart's handyman work. Um, and this is a purse that he made for my mother, actually. And Corey just figures it out. He, he gets a lot of his uh, leather in Moncton. Did you ever go into the leather store that Corey goes to in Moncton? Uh, once. Really eccentric, cool place. Oh, yeah, the smell. Oh, yeah, the... And, and it's a husband-wife combo. So Corey puts in his own snaps. A little, it shuts this way. And I'll tell you what. Um, why not, if you're watching this, why not, and if you want something that is in your mind and you think that you can... Uh, uh, you want something uh, that's 
authentic and made to your satisfaction, why not uh, deal with a local craftsperson such as Corey Wishart um, at Wishworks, the core store at Wishworks, and uh, he does woodworking, forages metal, does leather stuff. He does it all in his uh, shop out back. He's all self-taught. It's amazing work. This is my mother's. I looked in the purse Raj, and I found a photo in here that mum was carrying around. And look at this right here. That's actually my dad with his old softball jacket on. And there's your local historian back there. Look at the, the style in the hands. He's, he, and who has the puck? Of course Roger does because he's a puck hog. <laughs> but that's actually back in Napa and the boys are playing. But anyway, back to Corey, and if you're wondering how you possibly could get in touch with a sponsor such as Corey, uh, or are you actually, you're actually wondering how a guy like Corey Wisher could sponsor such a show like this, well, he does it by being the best brother-in-law a man could ever ask for. And if you're ever wondering how to get in touch with Wishworks at the Core Store, if you ever find yourself on the Miramichi, just oh, roll down your window and ask the first person that you see if they know Corey Wishard, because somebody's going to know him. So the ladies, the ladies that have a little puppy hang this over the shoulder, and the little puppy can oh, yeah. carry them along. Oh, yeah, a little chihuahua can stick it <laughs> at this. But isn't that, that's a beautiful piece of work. But if you have an idea in your own head of something that you would want, Corey is the easiest guy to work with. He will just make whatever you want, and you can design it and help him design it. And why not have something, you know, it's not going to be $7.99 at your local Walmart. It's coming from a local craftsperson. But for guys like myself and Roger, paying the extra dollar for something authentic and, and uh, something like that is so worth it. Yep. And uh, there you go. So this is what happened in 96 with the softball induction? Uh... Okay, so let's get back to some business. We're at 1996. This is one of Roger's most productive collecting years. Sorry for the glare there, guys. We, we're working with light here. Now this is a this is a pamphlet. There was a local ball team that was inducted into the Softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame and that local team was called the Logieville Bisons. Okay? So I'm trying to find uh okay. The Logieville Bisons of 1967 were inducted into the Softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame. And there's no way, I'm just reading this for the first time. Um, the well, Bison. Just basically, you just no okay. notification when we went in. Oh, that was a notification when they went in. Yeah. The, the team that was inducted is somewhere. Anyhow, oh, just a sec. Just one second. It's right here. Um, oh, oh, that's a metal, Raj. I'm sorry. Okay, so here's that team right here. Okay, now this is a this is a frame. Speaking of local craftsperson, Roger made this frame. There is a team from 1967. This picture is taking a literal 30 second walk from where we sit right now at the old Dust Bowl, and that team right there won the triple crown. They won the Intermediate A Championship, the Senior A Championship, and the Senior B Championship. They went to the first Canadian Senior Nationals that were hosted in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Roger Cummo was one of the younger players on the team. And on that team, we had Percy Langting as the coach, Junior McDonald, also known as Clarence. No, Clarence McDonald, only known as Junior. John Manderson, Peter Manderson, Joe Langtang, Tommy Langtang, Donnie Ross. He's, he's written down here as a manager, but he has a ball glove on. It looked like he was playing for 20 days straight in that uniform. Second row, left to right, we had Hart Ross was the treasurer. Jewel LaBelle, Roger Cummel, the local historian. Nick McGrath, Vince LeBlanc, Stan Henniger, uh, Alan Irvin, Frankie Weeks, Alan Robichaud, Donnie Murray, and missing were Jimmy LaBelle, James LaBelle, and Ian Russell. And here is Roger Como right here, folks, where my finger shows you the local historian. He's in the softball New Brunswick Hall of Fame with the 1967 Logieville Bisons. 
triple crown winners in softball. So Raj, you were always proud of that, were you not? Oh, definitely. That was one of your best. And we're and by the way, we are trying to track down a jersey. Somebody has one here in Logieville of that Bison's team. And Roger said they're like a cool brown color, kind of like San Diego Podge. No, it was like a burgundy brown, but we're trying to track it down. So hopefully we can show you that one of these days. Okay, okay what else do you got there? Well, there's a little caption here before we show you the story. Okay. Here it is, the Black Brook Coffee Shop, folks. Now open, Black Brook Coffee Shop, Riverbank Route 117, Logieville, hamburgers, hot dogs, homemade pies and bread, breakfast served all day from 7 to 10, seven days a week. And on your opening, we were pleased to do your renovation. Oh, Hubert Williston sponsored this. This is from July 96. I wasn't around in Logieville, so I would have went and supported this. I just didn't know it was happening. So here's the story Raj has coming right here. The new coffee shop folks have place to go in Logieville. Well, that's uh, basically Mel and uh, Mary's uh... old store. Yeah. It used to be old Mel's old store, right? When you're at the Black Brook. Look at that lovely photo. I will read this out. Genus Bowes, Mary Casey, or Cassie, Linda Russell, and Christine Daly. New coffee shop folks have place to go in Logieville. Joe Ross was sitting there having a coffee when this was taken. The Black Brook Cabins Coffee Shop is open for business and word spreading fast that it's the place to go in Logieville. Oh. Partners Linda Russell and Harold Daly bought the Black Brook Cabins comp. Oh, this is at the oh, cabins. Yeah, I mean, not the at the store. Not okay. The store. It wasn't at Mel's old store. This was amongst those little Black Brook cabins. Yeah. And you know what? I was not around. I was a college student and I had no idea this was happening. So sorry, Linda, right I would have been there. The cemetery. Right across from the cemetery. So I'm going to, next time I see Linda over at the old uh, Friday night Logieville Rec Center Cornhole, I'm going to ask her about this. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so maybe uh, Christine Daly, probably from town. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so they named uh, some of the people that were uh, <coughs> for every morning visitors. Oh, right on. Yeah. Oh, did they? Well, I know, I never highlighted some, of them, but she was one. They're, okay. They're right handy. Kathy Duffy <coughs> was going for some coffees. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Ross is sitting here, and I'll tell you what, Joe Ross, what he took in his coffee, two sugars and a milk, until later on, then he cut the sugar out, cut the milk, and he goes straight up black right now, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I learned. <laughs> Joe Ross likes his coffees black, folks. Just for curiosity sake. Yes. Uh, Miss Jessica, this Keith Cummins out of there. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, cool. So she has his old house down there. And oh, right on. been there now. And... Oh, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, this is a little uh, entertainment, Dr. Loger Middle School. Okay. This is from the Dr. Loger Middle School. Roger Como kept this piece of paper. This was a variety show from February 22, 1996. It, the welcome was in O Canada. They started it off in typical Dr. Loger fashion with the kick line that was going on for a while. Yeah. Mr. Lero played some music. Uh, now on piano, we had, uh, act number five was a Logie Villar, Amanda Godfrey did a little piano recital and right after her, Amy Doucette, the daughter of Gerard yeah. Doucette also did a little piano, um, and Amanda's the daughter of Eric, Eric, and yeah, Heather. Heather and Eric's daughter, Amanda, they live on the back road there in Wellington. And we had act number 11, the dance was a Roger's daughter, Amanda Cummo and Erica Butler. And then there was a skit following that. It was called Baseball. And that was Brad Trevors and Scott Trevors, folks. So right on, Raj. Thanks for keeping those sorts of things. It's well, very good to revisit. That was a program. So naturally, I had to keep it with my daughter performing. Of course. Yeah, nice uh, rendition of a nice uh, program for... Oh wow. Miramichi Salmon Tournament. Look at this program. Green and white, all glossy, beautiful. This is the Salmon Tournament, folks. This is uh, the minor hockey. This is the 17th annual Miramichi Salmon Invitational Hockey Tournament. I played in that several times. It's very exciting for the local teams. This was the 1996 edition. And if we scoot through this thing, Roger has an article on the inside here that features this 
young hockey player right here. Now, what was all, what was the story about? Sharp is the only girl playing. Beth Sharp, 16, has been playing hockey with the boys in her neighborhood since she was a little girl. I play hockey and baseball. Now, she's a member of the Newcastle Midget A team. And she said the boys she plays with treat her like one of them. I get the wind knocked out of me like everyone else. Beth uses the same dressing room as the boys. I just have to wear a t-shirt and shorts when I'm in there. And the boys are all pretty cool about it. I played hockey with them, most of them before. Beth was a grade 11 student at MVHS and a clerk at Shoppers Drug Mart. I wonder if her hockey career went on any further than that, Raj. Mm -hmm. And there's, from the Salmon Tournament in our local paper, there's a photo of all of our local uh, teams. Okay. And, you know, we're running uh, on time here, but there is a roster. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> there are some rosters. This was from the Banham A team at that time, the Chatham Ironman Banham A team. And on that team, we had Jared Sweezy, Jeff McFarland, Joey Savoy, Jeff Savage, Justin McRae, Brendan Crocker, Scott Walls, Matthew Harnish, Matthew Benson, Adam Savoy, Troy Cable, Brian McKay, Derek O'Donnell, Aaron Hensby, Ryan Muck, Davey Lynch, DJ Flanagan, Mike Richard, Wade St. Coeur, Jamie McGregor, Matthew Manderson, Jason McIntyre, and Matthew Barry was the trainer. And it's funny because Matthew Barry, I was in Korea, downtown city of about five million people, and I saw him on the street. Yeah, that's, there's too much to read there. But beautiful program. Salmon Tournament, 1996. So anybody that's been uh, visiting Misku Island. Which is the so, uh, northern tip of the Acadian Peninsula. Yeah. Well, this is photos, a nice colored photo of the uh, ferry unloading. Okay. In the meantime, the new bridge. Okay, so Misku Island up on the northern tip of, a, of the Acadian Peninsula. There's a shot of the ferry unloading, but in the background, Raj, this was a bridge under construction. And they finally got the bridge up there. Roger just told me a story that I thought was way cool. He said some years ago, him and uh, Margie, his wife, uh, um, camped right at the northern tip of that. And he said in the morning, the water, w the waves were coming in the, and the tide was coming in. He said it was an amazing experience. Eh? Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and for any of you that are watching this, it's like, I just took a drive up to the Canadian, Pen the Acadian Peninsula, Raj. I just went to Karakit. I didn't go as, but oh. what an underrated place. Like it's beautiful. Yeah. They get thousands and th hundreds of thousands of people up there in the summer for the Acadian festivals and stuff like that. It's really worth checking out. It's beautiful. <laughs> Great cafes, like the food up there. I was so impressed well, with our, everything. In our tent, uh, the, the sound of the waves were that close that we had a Close the door of the zipper so oh. the water wouldn't come in. Oh, water was splashing up. Oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, here's a here's uh, a shot. A full full page of the governor's mansion. Okay, so the governor's mansion, and like any other, most other Miramichiers, we all we hear about these names, but we really don't know the true history of it. This is over along the water in Nelson Miramichi, right, basically across from Bow Bears Island, and here's a full page. Look at the beautiful old antique furniture and stuff in this building and i would be a liar if i told you i had any idea about the governor's mansion so that's up for you guys to go and uh read up on yourselves but i know exactly where it is yep. and i will do my own reading up on it so we're getting close to winding down we'll have another oh, that's cool. historic building in chatham oh right on Historic Snowball House, now Victorian Dreamland. This is by Kathy Carnahan, who did many articles over the years. And look at this house. Is this the one in Chatham, right across from like old Bubsy De Place's place, yeah. near on 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 uh, Henderson Street? Well, yeah, you can you can see it just off of Henderson. Yeah, there. it's right off of Henderson. There's an old. I always look at this place. It looks beautiful to me. And it looks like this fine young lady right here was doing something inside. Let's read what she had up. Her name was Carla Crawford. It, she admires decorations at the Snowball House below, decked out for a Victorian Christmas. And that is really cool. I, I, um, 
They have turned the home of former Chatham Mayor and Member of Parliament J.B. Snowball into a Victorian dreamland. And uh, I think they turned it into apart apartments and stuff. Yeah, it's, a, it's in the historical yeah. homes of Chatham. Yeah, it's, it's the old uh, Mayor of Chatham's home. So this is the ticket that got these ladies $100,000. Oh, wow. Atlantic Lotto. Here's a good old lottery ticket, folks. Each one of these, they each won 100 grand. Oh, oh, 100 grand for the group. Oh, 100 grand for the group. I already recognize this woman right here. Um, I didn't look at this before. So there they are, a lottery ticket. And the winners of that, that was on uh, November 3rd, 1996. The ticket number was 305-5660-151-86. Nine Hotel Do Nurses left for Monken Wednesday to pick up their $100,000 check that they won at Lotto 649's Tag Draw. Front row, we have Mary Rishore, she's a Logie Villar, Patsy Stewart, Anna Marie Jardine, Mary Lee Crocker, she's one of my mom's friends, and Donna McKinnon. We also had Patsy Holland, Kathy Knowles, Ruth O'Reilly, and Kathy Campbell. And I, they took their check, they went to, um, uh, what's that mall called again? Champlain plays, and they spent it all on new shoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just a little quick message of, of a rendition that was supposed to be the rod in. Okay, so our rod in right here, here's a story on all that when that was in construction. I will read uh, this out really quickly. Miramichi's $8.4 million hotel complex, an icon of faith. An artist's rendering of the planned uh, Miramichi Hotel Convention Complex at left. Yvonne DePoint, chairman of the Engineering Construction of Montreal. Now, it, you know, whatever uh, did happen down there, it's a, it's a nice little complex. I go for breakfast there, sitting right on the river, and I always get the uh, smoked salmon eggs benedict. I just wish that they had something else with those potatoes, though. There's the eggs benedict, and they just give you potatoes. There should be like a little salady thing there. Yeah, I think we can almost close out. Well, That's we can fine. do these. We're gonna have to save this for next time, Raj. Oh, we're not gonna do that. We just don't have enough time. Yeah, we got time for the close. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is uh, where uh, okay. Jason was. Uh, okay. Make that speaker. And okay, stuff. we'll we'll cover it up. Right. So here's we'll go some more Jason Dixon here, folks. We spoke about him a lot. Of course we did. He's our local major leaguer from Napin. And uh, Dixon presents awards for minor ball. And this was the minor ball banquet. Jason Dixon. Capacity crowd turned out to the Lions Club Center last Friday evening for the Chatham Recreation Council's baseball program's annual awards banquet. Um, a drawing was held for a, a draw was held for a 20 by 18 laminated plaque of a color front page newspaper story of Dixon's delivering a pitch in his first game in California with California at Yankee Stadium. And the plaque was made by Harold Daly of Logieville and won by Jerry Watling of Knappen. So congratulations. And here is a cover up of some of the awards winners. There is the young Jason Dixon looking dapper. Hollywood good looks with some young players. And here he is at the banquet giving back to his community. Uh, Jason Dixon with New Brunswick champs. Brian St. Coeur, he was the most improved. Nick Hardy, he was the MVP. And John Hawks was the most dedicated. I see Nick Hardy at the gym once in a while. I'll say hello to him. Jason Dixon presents a trophy to Nick Hardy and John Hawks. And Evan Colpaw presents plaque to Dixon on behalf of Minor Ball. So right on, Mr. Dixon. And here's another one. Anybody that's in the Miramichi that, you know, this man has given so much to his community. He's a well-known figure in the sports community and in the education sector. And he's an accomplished guy, a smart man. Greg Morris inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Greg Morris was one of six people inducted to New Brunswick Baseball Hall of Fame and ceremonies at Child's Restaurant and Lounge Saturday night. Uh, Morris was inducted as a coach. He is one of the winningest coaches in Canadian baseball and the winningest in New Brunswick. 
and he started coaching when he was about 17, working with minor teams, winning a dozen or so provincial and maritime Bantam and Midget titles. Greg Morris, father of Terry, Brian, and Kathy, and they have all gone on to do very well in their lives, I think so as well. Uh -huh. And the husband of Linda. So we'll close out today's session with okay. uh, a well-known entertainer in the Mary Machine, Susan Butler, and her daughters, and what they accomplished okay. in 96. And right on, Raj. So, in 1996, we're closing out. This would have been the season end at the time. This is Susan Butler and her daughters. Susan Butler has been an icon in the Miramichi area with, uh, in regards to the arts and her music. Okay, so Susan Butler and family are hosting the launch of their new Christmas CD and tape, An Old Fashioned Christmas with Susan Butler and family. And this is the eighth record... I've been involved with and the newest producer has captured my voice the way it really sounds. I'm really pleased with it. And the recording is with her daughters, Kathleen and Shannon. And thank you, Susan, for all the work that you've done uh, providing music and with your work in the um, Folk Song Festival over the years. And thank you, Mr. Roger Cummo. Oh, Raj. Yeah, yeah you're did. good? They, uh, yeah, they went over to Brookdale Nurseries. Okay. And around Christmas time, with all the uh, decorative uh, trees and stuff, and right? That's, and that's where they got their photo. That taken. was the photo. Yeah. So Brookdale Nursery is over really the old CI Road and stuff. Yeah. It's not there anymore, right? I think well, they, I think they relocated somewhere. Well, the building is there, but yeah. I don't know how it's being used. Yeah, so. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, okay. So thanks, Raj, once again for all of this. This is going to be a long episode, which is fine with us. Um, beautiful blue skies in the Miramichi today. Thank you all you Miramichiers for hanging out with us and people that are not on the Miramichi anymore. And we're with the local historian, Roger Como. I'm away for a few days, so we'll catch you guys next week with part two of 1996. There's a lot more to come. Yes, sir.